I'm Alex Sanu from Dogmatic Records and you're watching the Guestless Network. Welcome to Guestless Network, I'm Joe Groove, and today we're here with Alex Arno. How are you doing Alex? Yeah, really good mate, you? I'm great, I'm great. Um, here today, um, we're obviously here both here for the same reason. Yeah. Enzo's party fuse yeah. and he's got um, Teeny playing and Guti doing an extended live set. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of, well, I kind of got here late. Yeah, yeah. Had my own little issues, whatever. You've just got here yourself. Yeah. Uh, what have you been doing recently? Uh, just um, working in the studio, really. Just uh, getting on with remixes, releases, running the label, producing for other people, engineering for other people. Just loads, man. <laughs> okay, so I mean, I mean, uh, I didn't really know that you you, uh, you engineered a lot for other other, other people. Is that that's something. Yeah, that's that's something I've always done, but after, I, I don't really have the time these days. Like things that. Like with like dogmatic taking off and uh, my stuff needing to be finished and, and in for deadlines that I'm not really finding the time at the minute. But I'm building a new studio soon, so once that's built, um, I'll be taking them on again. But at the minute, it's, it's just a bit right. Okay, long. cool. Yeah, because yeah. you've, you've been producing for some time now. A little while, yeah, yeah. yeah a little while. How many years? Uh, Ten. Since it's about 98, so yeah, about 12, about 12 years or something. 12 years. 13 years or something. Yeah, and what made you want to produce music? Um, I had a school friend um, who got into production at a very early age, 15, 16. And I used to sit in the studio and have a look at all the samplers and yeah. look at his computer and the big desk, so lights flashing off and it was just sampling bits of records that I loved and then sticking them in his track. So I was just sitting there, just blown away by like the whole thing. So I just thought, you know what, this is what I want to do. That's what you, you know, want to do. 15, 16. You know, 15, 16, do. okay, so like, I mean, my route is uh, I went to a DMC competition, I saw a DJ and thought, that's what I wanted to do. Yeah. So I kind of went down the DJ route, but you saw somebody making it and you went, right, that's what I want to do. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, that was part of it, but I mean, I started DJing first. Right, okay. Because I didn't have the knowledge of, of how to go about getting to the jail, how to work the stuff and everything. So I, I kind of went off to Spain and and, and DJ for five years and at the end of that five years came to the conclusion that the music I was playing towards the end of the 90s wasn't very good at all. So, and okay, I, what were you playing then? Well, it was like um, early 90s in like Tenerife was really cool, like really like Acid House movement came through, but like 94, 95, it was taken over by all the commercial type, like Manifesto, Positivo and everything. So yeah. in the end, I had to play stuff I didn't really want to play, but I had to work, so. Uh, playing all this rubbish made me realise <laughs> that I could actually make better records so I decided just to give all that up, come home, do a bit of learning and uh, get into it that way. So, But I'm glad I did it that way around. It's, it's better to come from the dance floor as a DJ and into production yeah, yeah. as opposed to just picking up production, not really knowing much about the DJ and all the club scene and then being thrown in at the deep end. So in my eyes I think I did it the right way, really. Okay, that's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. You've had, I mean, um, you've been around for a while, but you've actually had a string of hits. I mean, uh, one of my favorites, Vanishing Point. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think Alex, Alex Arno, it's your time right now. Do you feel that yourself? That? Um, I do. I you, mean, because you've worked hard for years. Yeah. And right about now, and loads of people are going, oh, you've heard about Alex Arno, but you've been around for ages. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't say it's my time now, as in, yeah, it's my time, you know. It's, it's just like yeah. something clicked in the studio about three, four years ago. Like, different ways of working. I, I swapped from Logic. Logic was, um, Logic is a great sequencer, but it, it's, 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 it's very difficult. I mean, I was on it for four years, but what I found, it, it, it wasn't pressing my buttons. I wasn't getting excited. It was making me yeah. sit in front of a computer and use a mouse. It's quite convoluted, actually. Yeah. I think. And as a beginner, it's quite difficult to get into. Yeah. Um, with Ableton, I found that I could have controllers and I didn't have to sit in front of the computer and I could press buttons and record and actually do all the tracks live rather than sit in front of the computer and, and move the mouse and everything. And that's the that's the change, I think. I'm having more fun in the studio and just having a jam, really. I've recently just done the same thing and swapped Ableton. Literally, because you can have loads of things running even before you've arranged anything, and then you yeah. can think, that sounds good, then record it, yeah. then start arranging it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas with Logic, it's a little bit more, you need to be structured yeah. and go, okay, that's my yeah. kick, that's my blah, blah, blah. I mean, in all fairness, Logic has come on over the last few years. I mean, the last version of Logic, I was always seven and that was dull as anything but when it comes to eight and nine they started copying what Ableton was doing and in my eyes I thought well why get logic that's trying to be like Ableton yeah well, Ableton just get is. Ableton so so yeah yeah so Ableton is fun okay so <laughs> what did you start what, what were you listening to when you were a kid 
growing up? Um, all sorts really, I mean like we moved around uh, a, a lot of, like as a kid, kid, four or five years old, a lot of Motown, Jackson 5 stuff, because that's what, what my mum was that into. That's why you still got the afro, yeah? Yeah, yeah, I mean that, that's, how, that's why I, I eventually <laughs> got the afro, eventually got the afro, but um, yeah, um, just loads of Motown stuff, uh, anything I could get my hands on that, that, that kind of moved me at the time, and like because I was living in Belgium at the time, there's a lot of French music like Jean-Michel Jarre stuff yeah, course, that was playing yeah. around in that, and, and Serge Gainsbourg and things like that, and yeah, 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 yeah. Je and that. So I got quite Oxygen, a nice, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> got, got, got quite a nice mix of like music coming through, you know. So were you ever a b-boy when you were a kid, when you were younger? Yeah, when I got to England, yeah, it, like, started getting into it, you know, because it, it, it kind of triggered me to get into house because the sounds that you know Grandmaster Flash is using, and yeah, yeah, like Most we're, we're, yeah. we're quite electro they were quite oh. seems. 808s, 909s, you know, yeah. which is which is the foundation of like house and that sure. thing. So, so that was my first kind of uh, contact with kind of drum machines and things, and and it just blew me away, mate. Yeah. It just blew me away, and then kind of started going onto the Chicago scene. Like I was liking Luther Vandross and Alexandre O'Neill, which kind of led me into more Very like vocal days. house. Yeah, 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 which led me into like house sound in Chicago, which was Ralph yeah. Rosario. Uh, uh, DJ Pierre, uh, Risk A3, just all these like Detroit heads or Chicago yeah. heads just like putting loads and loads of wicked music out and, and that just got me. Yeah. That just and got of course me. people like Robert Owens as well, Yeah, which course, one yeah. for me, yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. So, yeah. so okay, bringing the speeding back up right now, yeah. what's happening with you and your um, your label Dogmatic and what's happening in the future, next few months, what can you tell us? Um, Any secrets? No <laughs> secrets really as such, like, I mean, I'm the only one running the label so I don't get any help so it's a bit time consuming along with like everything else but um, I've licensed an, an old piece of track called Black Light Sleeves and I'm getting new remixes yeah. of that with uh, Dia to doing a remix and, and, and I'm doing a remix of that and um, I'm just into pushing new guys and that like, I've got a few new artists on the label and uh, I'm going to do a various artist EP with them like kind of pushing them through like really really good stuff and that yeah. but obviously they haven't been heard of so I just want to do it Again, like just get some like a new bunch of producers out there, which I know are really good and course, yeah. and, and and would easily fit into what's going on now. So, yeah, my, my next stage is kind of launching about two or three new artists okay. in, in the near future. So what about you in an album? Because I know you've got loads of tracks there that you haven't even put out. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So what's going on with that? Come on, man. Well, uh, I'm w waiting because my studio's at home, so obviously I can't make a lot of noise. So um, I'm waiting till I get this new studio space. Um, and then I'm going to link all my drum machines to my synths, uh, get everything talking, and just set everything up. I've got so much gear, but it's all in boxes at the minute. Right, okay, yeah, space and the yeah, yeah. noise. Yeah, so um, the space I've just got is big enough to actually set everything up and, and have everything working. So once all that's set up, then, then, then yeah, I'm going to Okay, so we might see an album at the end of next year, maybe? I'm, 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 I'm going to start constructing it <laughs> in spring. He in knows, spring. he knows. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Keep spinning me, keep spinning no, me. No. Yeah. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna start putting it together in in the springtime. I'm gonna go I'm gonna travel around a little bit. Yeah. Um, stay in a few different cities and just draw a bit of inspiration from like, you know, Amsterdam, Barcelona. Uh, there was a guy I met years ago and, and all he used to do he used to go to various like cities and sit in bars and jazz cafes and with a mini disc sit there, record the atmosphere and some of the music that was going yeah, on. Yeah, the ambience and all that stuff. And yeah. then he would come home and cut it up and, and stick his own beats in them right. and just make a whole radio show out of it. I used to do this yeah. like, radio show and he was on before me and he used to come in, plug his mini disc in and just sit there and have a cigarette and listen to his whole show and I thought that was wicked, you know, just okay. take it ambiences of real life yeah, and, then, yeah, yeah. and then David Holmes did it on his album he went around New York with a, with a dad yeah Goldie did it for his first album he did loads list. of people yeah. so, so I'm, I, I'd like to capture some essences from the cities rather than just do a house album and that's your 10 house yeah, 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 I'd like to do just incorporate influences and um, places that have influenced me as well, like Barcelona, yeah. I lived there for, for a year, had a great time DJing there, Amsterdam. So you're talking about an artist album with some substance Yeah, yeah, it. yeah, rather than... Not just than, dance floor tracks. Yeah, yeah, not just that, no, just yeah. like, and, and trying to go, trying to go through my influences, so it's not necessarily going to be a total house number, you know, it's yeah. going to come from, I'm, I mean, I used to be into a lot of like Miami bass and like Detroit electro stuff and that, so I want to okay. touch on that as well. Um, I've been into Deep House, I used to do Broken Beat, you know. Um, I love that shit, Domu, sick producer. Yeah, yeah, I used to work with Daz IQ, like, uh, from Bugs in the Attic and that. Uh -huh. He kind of taught me a lot uh, at that stage. So, yeah, I just want to touch on, on on aspects of 
of who you are and yeah. what makes you yeah. the man of today. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. yeah. yeah okay, well, I'm just going to close this up now. I'm going to ask you a question I ask everybody. If you were uh, banished to a desert island, you had to take three famous people with you. Oh, okay. Who, who are they and why would you take them? Three famous people? I mean, yeah. uh, I'm I know. not into the celebrity thing, but... I'm not either, but that's why I'm asking. But like if you had to, it's a hard one, isn't it? I would take Laurie Levan. Larry Levan, like yeah. Cool. And just get inside his head. Okay. Um, uh, I would probably take Musos. I mean, it's, it's, it's hard to to think of them at a, off, off the top of my head now because there's so many artists that have influenced me for But you still need to give me so two more. <laughs> okay, uh, Michael Jackson, Luther Vandross, Larry Levan. And Larry Levan, you're not going to take a chip with me? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's alright, it's caught out of quite a few people and they're like, oh shit, I don't really think of it like that. <laughs> okay, you can change one of them if you want to. Uh, no, I'm going to stick with it. You're going to stick with it, okay. Stick with it, stick with it. Cool, nice one Alex. <laughs> cool man, thank you very much. Thank you.